And a very good afternoon to you boys and girls. It's Saturday the 9th, is it the 19th? 19th of August 2017. Welcome to this morning's United Kingdom talk, the, uh, or this afternoon's, we're a bit late this morning. I've already been out today. Oh yes, yes, I jumped on my little bike. I went to the bank, I recycled some ink cartridges. I also had a load of uh, batteries that I meant to drop into the... Um, uh, into the uh, into Waitrose, they've got a, like a bin where you put used batteries in, and I can, I forgot to take those. So I hate that, don't you? You know when you're going out, and I always seem to forget something. I had to come back. Uh, oh, hang on, let me turn that off for you. Uh, I had I I had to come back to the house three times the other day trying to get into my car and go somewhere. Hmm. Yeah, it's true. So I did that. Had a look around. Um, uh, Waterstones, because I finished reading my book and I've purchased a new book. Now, you may think I've got a strange taste in books. I don't go for anything in particular. Now, I've only just started reading, as in this year. When I say started reading, I mean I can read, uh, but but books. I always found it very, very difficult to read a book. And then earlier this year, I picked up a, a book called Radio Boy, which is about um, uh, a little boy who wants to do a radio station in a school. He's a schoolboy, uh, so and they say no, so he sets up his own radio station in, in his shed. So I read that one. Then I read a book about um, this bloke who's got a brain tumour, and how it eats all his memories and TV station, as TV station gets involved and want him want to film him doing all that. So I've done all that. So I've gone into Waterstones today and there's a wonderful thing going into a bookshop and choosing a book. It really is. And I, I must have been in there 20 minutes and I've come out. <laughs> don't laugh. You know, as I say, there's nothing in particular I go for. I, I kind of pick them off. I look at the covers and I oh, like the look of that one. Then I read the back of it. And if it takes my fancy, I buy it. And I have bought Pig Heart. But there's the receipt. Look, water. See, proof that I haven't nicked it. A lot of you people think I'm going around nicking things all the time, don't you, eh? It's outrageous. No, I haven't nicked it. From Waterstones, thank you very much. For £6.99, pence. that becomes my bookmark. And uh, Pig Heart Boy, it says, Your th I like young adults. Young adults type books. It's it's a particular section in the books. Are, it's quite easy to read. Not the, the words are not too long because I'm not that. You know I'm not intelligent. I, I I I'm not I'm not that intelligent. Okay, so young adults seem to um, grasp my um uh, my attention uh, reading wise. It says you're 13. All you want is a normal life, but most normal kids don't need heart transplants. So there's this doctor. He says there's a chance for you, but he also says it's experimental, controversial and risky. And it's never been done before. So that's the next book I'm going to read, which I'm looking forward to. I have to say, there's an awful lot of American books there. Not that there's anything wrong with American books, but I want to see something. I want to see read something by someone British. At least I'll understand afterwards. And they spell it correctly then. Colour. C-O-L-O-U-R. Thank you very much. What's it? Colour. C-O-L-O-R. Incorrect. Uh -uh. No. Colour. C-O-L-O-U-R. Honestly, Americans, you must learn to spell things properly. You really must. Uh. So I went into Waterstones uh, after I went into the bank. Then I got rid of my ink cartridges. Uh, then I went into Waitrose, did a little bit of shopping around there, uh, bought myself two jars for my um, for my special breakfasts. In the morning, I have uh, dried oat breakfasts, which you prepare. Actually, I prepare that now two days before. So it's like um, fat-free yoghurt, because we're on the Slimmers world. Fat-free yoghurt, uh, dried oats, blueberries. Fat-free yoghurt, dried oats, blueberries. And I have a slightly bigger jar now, so I might, get, might even get another layer of oats in. How exciting is that? Cycled back here. Um, now, what, what happened? I nearly fell off my bike. <laughs> because I, I, I'd forgotten how much... I, I had a lot of shopping from Waitrose, and I always do this. I've got two bags on the back of my bike, and they do hold quite a lot. They hold quite a lot. But, of course, the more you put in, the heavier it becomes. And I've got potatoes in there, and I've got tins of stuff and things like that. And I thought, oh, this is a bit heavy. Anyway, I can't remember. I, I, I nearly... What happened? Where, where was it? Oh, that was it. So I was, I was coming down a hill and then someone with a dog. Oh, and, that, and it's those blooming extendable leads. Oh, they do annoy me. Yeah, and people got these, and the dog goes out and the, the lead is going right the way across the, the blooming cycle path. 
Oh, so I've had to break. And as I've put my foot down, somehow I, I, I kind of lost it. And the weight of the, the potatoes, I think, was pulling the bike over. Anyway, managed to get home. Uh, watered some of me hanging baskets at the front, which I still haven't done the photos of. Uh, if you see the countdown before the show, I'm going to redo some of the flower sections because there's a lot of flowers out there now than there was when I first done the countdown. If the, most of you won't see that countdown. You've got to be there as soon as the show starts, as soon as I click live. Uh, to be able to see the full countdown, which is five minutes long, OK, uh, which is, is a bit long. The reason that is, is that so you know something is going to happen and you've got time to catch us right at the beginning, you see. Got back in here, come upstairs, and um, here I am to chat to you. Now, I can't be too long today. I'm going to limit myself to 35 minutes, and there is a reason for that. I've just put chips in my new, which I showed you yesterday, in my new Tower Health Fryer. Oh, yes. Look at that, and I will do a video of um, of of me making chips in this for you at some point, okay? Uh, possibly next week. I've got a bit of time on my hands next week, so I'll do that. That's my new tower fryer. Now, I've put chips in there, and I've put, I'm taking a risk here. I really am. I've put chips in there. I've sprayed them with the fry light, and they're on now. So I'm hoping they're going to be round about 45 minutes, okay? So I'm giving myself... 30 minutes of show time, 35 minutes of show time today, and I must finish on time. None of this rabbiting on about nothing, you know, for hours, which is probably exactly what I'm doing now, to be honest, my new tower fryer. So there we are. Uh, let's say hello to some of you early people who are with us today. Hello to uh, Craig. Good morning, Craig, who says Saturday talk. Yes, we do a show Saturday always, dear. Well, near enough always. Good morning, Craig. Hope you're well. Uh, Rod Brown's there this morning. Claire. Hello, Claire. Uh, Diane's there. Greetings, Diane. She's always there. Diane is always the first person to like the show. Always. We could have a little bit of a competition there, couldn't we, actually? See who could be the first person to like the show each week. Yes. Uh, good morning to uh, Sean Riches. Uh, good morning, Sean. Sean's with us today. You must be going to bed soon, getting ready for your... Uh, what time do you go to bed, Sean? Because you do milk, don't you? He's a milkman, Sean. Uh, over in uh, Norfolk. I think he goes to bed quite early. I don't know. Uh, greetings to Rick Porter, who's in the USA. A little item coming up for you later, Rick. Greetings, Rick. Um, Ray Reynolds is here this morning. Good morning, Ray. Morning to Timothy Thomas. Could I say hello to Kerry? Hello, Kerry's... Oh, sorry, Kerry's Auntie Anne. Auntie Anne is in the house. I had an Auntie Anne. Oh, yes. Long, long time ago. Gosh. Uh, no, hang on a minute. Auntie... Was it Auntie Anne? No, it wasn't. I haven't got an Auntie Anne. What's her name then? Auntie. Oh, how funny is that? She's, she's not. She she died very young, actually. Um... Oh, I can't remember her name. Isn't that awful? I can't remember her name. That's dreadful. Did I have an Auntie Anne? <laughs> well, isn't that awful? I can't remember her name. Terrible. Uh, so hello to Auntie Anne. There's another Auntie Anne. Hello, Auntie Anne, who's in London, I think, uh, staying for the weekend. I hope he makes you very comfortable there, my love. All right. I hope he does make you very comfortable. And greetings to Jay, who joins us this morning. Hello, Jay. I'm firing on all cylinders today, Jay. Firing on all cylinders, sir. OK, now, um, first of all, in the show today, I want to play you a little bit of music. Uh, which I don't usually do, uh, because the papers, the news stories, we are full of it this morning, and quite rightly so as well. We have lost, here in the UK, the greatest entertainer this country has ever seen, and probably will ever see. Mr Bruce Forsyth left this world uh, yesterday, I think it was yesterday afternoon they told us, wasn't it? And he's all over the papers this morning. I've managed to pick this up in Waitrose. There's a wonderful picture of uh, Brisu there uh, saying, didn't he do well? And um, lots and lots of talking here. Um, in the paper, his career spanned 75 years. This is in the Daily Mail this morning. All right. His, his career spanned 75 years and touched the lives of millions and millions of people. Last night, fans and show business friends were in mourning after the death of Sir Bruce Forsyth at the age of 89. I mean, that's that's a good age, isn't it? 89 is a good age, but a lot of people go on to 100 now, don't they? Um, the former Strictly Come Dancing host has been unwell for some time, has not been seen publicly since late 2015. You may remember, of course, um, he... Uh, 
uh, pulled out, I think, at the, at the last minute of the Christmas special, I think it was, of Strictly Come Dancing some time ago. Um, he died yesterday at his Surrey home, and we haven't seen him since. We haven't seen a word of him since. And everybody's been wondering, you know, is he not well and, and that? And well, of course he wasn't well. You know, otherwise he would have been back on the telly doing something. I, I would love to have seen him doing one more season of the Generation Game. I don't care how old people are. I don't care how old they look. I don't care how people look, how fat they are, how old they are, what colour. they I don't care what people are look. It's what they've got inside them. And he, this man has got had so much talent. He could do anything. Sing, dance, play the piano, be funny. But he was so natural. He was so natural. And I've said this on the show so many times. Uh, a lot of these people on the telly are completely unnatural now and fake. They are fake. There are people hosting quiz shows. Some who are not fake. Bradley Walsh is not fake. He's very natural. But there are others that come across as fake. Ben Shepherd. I mean, that fake smile all the time. For God's sake, man. Get someone else in there who can be more natural. You couldn't have been more natural than Bruce Forsyth. I tell you. Um, uh, it's with great sadness was the announcement that uh, Forsyth family announced that Bruce passed away this afternoon. This is yesterday. Peaceful, all surrounded by his wife, uh, Will Nellia, I think I've got that right. Will Nellia, I think it is. And all his children were there as well. And I mean, what more could you want? What more could you want when you're there to be dying, to be surrounded by your loved ones? You know, my mother didn't have that experience. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to the hospital uh, quick enough, but uh, he did. And, and I'm very pleased with that. Um, his, his sense of humour, it says, remained to the end. A couple of weeks ago, a friend visited him and asked what he'd been doing. With a twinkle in his eye, he responded, I've been very, very busy being ill. <laughs> that is Bruce. That is Bruce, isn't it, eh? Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Unfortunately, not long after this, his health deteriorated and he contracted uh, bronchial pneumonia. Uh, the family thanked the many people who have sent cards and letters to Bruce, wishing him well over his long illness and know that they will share in part the great, great loss they feel. BBC One changed its schedule last night to air a tribute show called Mr Entertainer. On Monday, the one show... Um, oh, I'm so sorry, darlings. I've, uh, he, he was very, very big to me, this man. I mean, I never met him or anything. Um, but... Uh, He's, he's kind of almost the last one for me. Not not quite the last one. Uh, the, the, the big entertainers for me as I was growing up, right up to now, they've all now gone except, I think, one. I think there's one left. And I'll tell you who they are. Morecambe and Wise. The two Ronnies. Um, Larry Grayson. And Bruce Forsyth, uh, Bob Monkhouse, that was the other one. And Bob Monkhouse, they've all gone. There's one left and he doesn't work anymore. Mike Yarwood, he was a great um, impressionist in the 1970s. He was fantastic. Just like Bruce, he had Saturday night shows. He had the Christmas specials, you know, and all that. And he's the only one left, but unfortunately he doesn't do it anymore. It's very sad, really. I, I don't know if he ever got over it, but he, he had to stop his career because he was um, unfortunately not coping with, I think, the fame, really. I don't think he, he coped too well with the fame, Mike Yarwood, but he was fantastic on the telly and uh, he suffered a lot with drink problems. Uh, whether or not he ever overcame those, I don't know. I remember seeing an interview with him, which Bob Monkhouse uh, did... Uh, I think around about 10 years ago, or a little bit more than that now, uh, which I think was repeated on Channel 4, possibly last night, or is about to be repeated. I can't remember now. Um, but he's still around. Whether or not we'll ever see him on the stage or on television again, I don't know. But uh, uh, Bruce Forsyth, I mean, and tributes from so many people in the mail this morning. Jimmy Tarbuck, great entertainer. He was the best all-round entertainer we've ever had. I salute him. I've admired him. I enjoyed him as a friend. Barbara Windsor, this is the end of a show business era and it really is. You don't see these people anymore. 
you know, okay, you see some on the telly, but just they leave me cold half the time, these people. They really do. Um, I mean, indeed, some, some of the people, i got to say, I'm not going to read you the names, but some of the people um, giving the tributes are on the telly themselves and they haven't got a, a tenth of 1% of his talent and they're on there. They're on there. Where where are we ever going to find someone like that again? Like Morecambe and Wise, like the two Ronnies, like Les Dawson. Where are we going to find these people again? Because they're not there now. There's a couple who ain't bad, but they're nothing like this. And um, I'm going to play you a little tune now. Generation Game producer Alan Boyd says he never had an off day, never a moody show when you thought, oh, he's not very good tonight. Bruce always gave his best. Now, uh, as I say, Generation Game producer Alan Boyd, that's where I know him best from, the Generation Game. Of course, he was around long, long before that. Long, long before the Generation Game. Uh, his big break, I think, came with Sunday night at the London Palladium. But not a lot of people know. He was on the stage for years before that, doing theatres all up and down the place. And he got his thing on, on last night, uh, uh, on Sunday night at the London Palladium. And that's where he did his big thing. That's where it, I think, really big time started for him. And uh, lots of shows. Um, play your cards right, of course. You remember that one on London Weekend Television? Uh, there was he had a little bit of a hiccup, I think. He left the Generation Game, which I'm going to play you the uh, original opening theme music to in a moment. He left the Generation Game to go on. Uh, London Weekend Television, not for Play Your Cards Right, that was before that, uh, for a show called, I think it was called Bruce's Big Night Out, and it just didn't work. That And, and that happens to a lot of entertainers. They make the switch from the BBC to ITV, and I don't know why, but it often doesn't work. It didn't really work for Morecambe and Wise, you remember. Uh, I don't know if Bob Monk... Yeah, no, Bob Monkhouse went the other way, didn't he? I think he went the other way. He went from ITV to the BBC. Uh, the Price is Right. Thank you very much, David. I don't remember him on The Price is Right, funnily enough. Um, but when when he first went to ITV, I think he wishes he never had done because it, this Bruce's big night, it just did not work. I don't know why. It just didn't. Uh, anyway, later on, of course, he went back to the BBC and redid the Generation game. Um, and I've got the theme music, the original theme music here to The Generation Game, which I hope you enjoy. It's only about a, a minute long, so have a listen to this. Bruce Forsyth's Generation Game. <laughs> Don't play the game with two And I want to play the game with you Thank you very much indeed. Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and children. Welcome to the Generation Game. Nice to see you. To see you. Oh, yes. And that, that was probably his best known catchphrase, I think. Uh, nice to see you. To see you nice. He had loads of other catchphrases in his programmes um, over the years. One on Play Your Cards Right comes to mind. You get nothing for a pair. Not in this game. And uh, on the conveyor belt in the Generation game, of course, didn't he do well? Wonderful, wonderful man. I actually had the privilege to be sitting there and seeing him host the Generation game once at uh, BBC Television Theatre, uh, which was on Shep. It's not there anymore. It's uh, I think it's a I don't know if it's is it a nightclub or or a show venue. Anyway, it was the BBC TV Theatre where they did a lot of stuff there, including the Generation game. Uh, That's Life was filmed there. A lot of music shows. I went to see George Hamilton IV, who was a country country music singer. Uh, but uh, the Generation Game was there as well, and I went to see that. And what a what a great man! I was sitting quite close to the front as well, um, which was quite lucky. You know, you could see everything going on there. The cameras whisking around and everything like that. I always got very excited like that. As a, I think I went with my dad. I think my dad took me there 
but I was very privileged to go and see that. Perhaps you remember anything about Bruce Forsyth. You can call in if you want to. Uh, there's a phone line open, 020 3477 if you want to give us a call this morning. All right, 020 uh, 8, I don't know why I'm, I'm ever so upset about this this morning. 020 3477 It's like another part of my life has been taken away. You know, all these people. And there's, 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 I think there's just one left, Mike Yarwood now. And I'm so sad to see all these people go. I really am. You guys, I suppose you can see. I hope someone will run. Perhaps uh, some of the old Generations game may be on one of the um, uh, gold channels or something like that. Might be nice, might not Let's do uh, some of your messages uh, coming in again, boys and girls. Um, hello to David Jackson, who joins us today. Hello, David. All right. Vectis says, fancy a live hookup? Yeah, call in if you want to, uh, Vectis. That'd be nice if you want to call in Vectis. Oh, I've only got um, I've only got 15 minutes, though, dear. 15 minutes because I've got chips in the oven. <laughs> and I'm a bit con <laughs> I'm a bit concerned they're going to burn. All right. Ben says, uh, Colin says he was a legend. He absolutely was. He was a total legend. Uh, hello to Dino this afternoon. Joins us. Uh, David Jackson says the price is right. You've done that. Uh, uh, Colin says, I remember him on a Sunday night at the London Palladium. Very funny and very, very talented. Morning to Kevin Devolda. Do you remember when he was in Magnum P? Ah, uh, PL. Uh, no, I don't. Was he in that? I know he was in a few films, wasn't he? Definitely, yeah. Ah, uh, oh, Colin says Mike Yarwood is in a nursing home. Yeah, it's just so sad. It's so sad when you see these big entertainers uh, end up somewhere like that. It really is. Anyway, that's Bruce Forsyth, and may you rest in peace, and thank you for the wonderful, wonderful shows that you gave us all. Bruce Forsyth, rest in peace. All right, on to something else, boys and girls. Um, what do you have for English breakfast? I ask this because one of my friends um, on Facebook, Rick Porter. Hello, Rick. Who is in Pittsburgh, United States of America, writes in this morning. What does a full English breakfast consist of? Let's just take this call. Hello, who's on the line, please? Bonjour, my lovely. It's Kevin. Bonjour, Kevin. How are you today? I'm not too bad, sweetheart. How are you doing? Try and sound a little bit more lively. Have you just opened those little lines of yours? Were they stuck together with, with eyelash uh, liner or something like that? They, they were slightly because I've only just got back to Manchester from London. You're in Manchester, um, are you? I am. I'm back up in Manchester again now, yes. Oh, OK. Um, Welcome to the show. What would you like to say? Um, well, I was just saying um, about the, uh, the Magnum PI. Reference. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, was that was, an, was that an American thing? It was Magnum PI. It was uh, an American. It was the right. guy who had the uh, the moustache. Yes, and, I remember uh, him. Yes, he was, yes. He played a game show host. Oh, um, right. Okay. In the, in the Magnum PI. So you got an iPhone PI. Seven, haven't you? I have. You got a large iPhone Seven, haven't you? I have a yeah, I knew it. I knew it. They are the worst phones for being able to hear anything on the other end. People keep moving them away from their mouth. It's not your fault. It's the design of the phone. They are an absolute nightmare, those iPhone 7s. Oh, is that any for you? No, it's worse. It sounds is like you've got the pillow over it. Yeah. What, what if I put you on speaker? Does that make it any better? Try. Well, there you go. I'm on speaker now. Okay. There you are. So, yeah, no, he was in Magnum PI, but I was saying to somebody else earlier on, it's all the great ones, the two Ronnies, Morecambe and Wise, and everything else like that, yeah. they're all going, but we have to remember, and we're very lucky, that we have all the recordings of all of these, and we oh. can keep following them on. And God, and, yeah. and weren't we lucky to be there at the time as well? Well, exactly, yeah. What, what, mean, what annoys me, Kevin, and I actually get very, very angry watching their telly, watching these people as, as they die, but not being replaced by something similar, being replaced by stuff like The Only Way is Essex. Make, and the, yeah. the latest one I've seen this week, which I managed three minutes of watching it, was Make or Break. Have you seen that one? No, right. I don't watch right. live TV right. anymore. Right, well, like, like, you know, like Big Brother, I'm sure you don't watch Big Brother or anything like that. So Make and Break know. is the latest disgusting programme where four couples, four couples move into a house and the mm. idea of the show, get this, the, 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 the format of the show is that yeah. they try and split each other up. That's the entertainment. 
Really? That is the That's entertainment. Yeah. And that it's is what... Like four in the bed as well. That sort of thing. It's all oh. shot TV. Is that the hotel thing? It, yeah, it's, a, yeah it's, it's awful. It's just yeah. all of the TV nowadays, it's all meant to sort of make people fight against each other that, and all that lot. It's just, it's not like the yep. good old days. Like, like Bruce Forsyth. Like it's awful. Yeah. Terrible. And this is yeah. this is what the shows are being replaced for. I don't think anyone's going out there and looking for proper talent what stand, that is standing on a stage and entertaining people. They get in these as uh, these these nobodies who are very good looking. And let's be honest, we're all very good looking for a few years. And that's it. Well, we're, we're both still gorgeous. Well, they, I think so as well, Kevin. Thank you very much, yeah. dear. <laughs> I can't see you, so I'm just imagining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so but, you remember I mean, even, even things like the TV shows, the new TV shows they're bringing now, they only really work if you have experienced people like Vicious. That was an amazing, amazing, funny show. Oh, what is we, that, Vicious? Uh, I don't know that. It was uh, Siri McKellen and um, the, uh, David, uh, David Jeffrey. Now, there's a Derek, talent. Derek Jeffrey. There's a talent, Sir Ian McKellen. And I found out something on Wednesday night. Where I, where I host my uh, quiz at the King's Head Theatre Bar, right? Yeah. I found out Sir Ian McKellen has a pub. Now, mm -hmm. did you know this? I did. Well, I didn't know. Is it the, called The Grapes? I uh, can't remember what the name of it was. I think it's called The Grapes. On Monday night, they have a quiz. Guess who hosts it? Oh, uh, I couldn't tell you. Go on. Oh, come on, Kev. You Not let you. me down. No. No, right, let's give you... God, I can't believe you didn't get that. <laughs> so listen, Sir Ian McKellen's got a pub. I think it's yeah. called The Grapes, somewhere in central London, possibly. Who do you right. think hosts the quiz? I don't know. I've only just woken him. up, love. Him, dear. He hosts oh, he the has, quiz. So can you just imagine that? Can you just imagine that? Being at a quiz night, hosted... By Sir Ian, Mac Ian McKellen. That is fantastic. Oh, I, I think we need. I think we need to pay a visit. We do. We do need, need to, to pay, pay a visit, visit there. Especially <laughs> if we wind him, wind him up, then we can get him to come out with his wig and accent. <laughs> Perhaps I, he might want to make a trip here to the Mirable Studios and be interviewed. No, probably not. <laughs> All right, Kev. Now listen. <laughs> right, you take care. Have a no, great don't go. Sure don't go. Don't, oh, go, yet. don't go yet. Right. Don't go yet. Don't go yet. I've got right. something to ask you. <laughs> Something to ask you, OK? Uh, so on, my then. friend Rick Porter put on here, what does a full English breakfast consist of? OK? Now, a few people have answered. I wondered what you... What what in your mind is a full English breakfast? So let's have it from you. Right. Full English breakfast, it needs to be at least two big, thick sausages. Cumberland or something like that. Nice bit of herb in it. Uh, a couple of ashes of bacon. Uh, there has to be baked beans. It has to be Heinz. Um, we've got to have some egg. Now, some people like scrambled, but you can have fried. There has to be fried bread, absolutely fried bread. And black pudding is a must. If you want to go over the top, put some chips on it on the side and all. Lovely. That, that sounds... And, and mushrooms. That sounds just about perfect to me, Kevin. And if I ever get up to Manchester and I, and I stay in your little house, I've been waiting for many years to be asked, to be honest, uh, I shall uh, expect that first thing in the morning. But of course, you're, done. You're, you're done. always welcome, but you're the one that's cooking because if you thought you were a guest, you guessed wrong. Done with fry light, of course. Fry light, dear. Oh, fry light. Absolutely. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> but I'll watch our figures, haven't we, girls? <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. You have a great day. Love Good luck to the Mancunians. Bye. Cheerio now. Bye now. There we are. Kevin calling in from Manchester. <laughs> Let's just add him on there. Uh, just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, so that's the question. What what in your mind is a full English breakfast? Uh, I I responded to that. 
You can. You, I'll ask you the same thing. What is your idea of a full English breakfast? Uh, put a little message up there and I'll read it out. OK, I'll have to close the phone lines here. Otherwise, I'll, I, don't, I don't want burnt chips. Well, I don't mind if the chips burn. That's not so bad. If they go up in flames, it might be a problem. But I've got a smoke alarm in the kitchen, so I'm listening out for that, to be honest. Um, so I replied to that. A full English breakfast is sausage, egg, beans, bacon, fried bread, fried tomatoes. Some have black pudding on there and some have chips. That was my reply there. Uh, Peter Baxter uh, replies, very similar to myself. Sausages, bacon, eggs, fried tomato, fried mushrooms. Yes. Uh, fried bread. Oh, oh, fried bread. When is the last time I had a piece of fried bread? I love it. There must be so many sins in what there's got to be 50 sins in a piece of fried bread. There, let me look. I'm going to see if I can find that. How many sins? How many sins fried bread? There's, now, remember, sins, I'm on Slimming World, OK? I'm allowed 25 sins a day as a male. Sins in fried bread. Let's have a look. Anyone know the sin value of half a slice of fried bread? In, oh, 11. 11 sins for a thick slice of fried bread. Oh, well, that's not bad, is it? Now, apparently, the fry light on, 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 on for fried bread, that doesn't work. It's rank. Don't, don't even bother trying that one, OK? So just a little word of advice there. Um, uh, Sarah says, yuck, black pudding. Most places no longer offer fried bread, which is a shame because it's delicious. I don't understand why people... And this is true. I don't understand why people worry about how unhealthy fried bread is for you when they're eating sausage, bacon and eggs all cooked in oil. She's got a point. She's got a point there. Dan Simon says, and spam. Absolutely not. No. No, you would not have spam... On an English bre on a cooked English breakfast, absolutely not. Thank you, those of you that have shared the show to your walls uh, this morning. By the way, I, I did spot that. I always like to thank people for doing that. Those of you that have shared the show on your walls this morning, thank you very much. Um, and Alan Squar Squaria says bangers and mash washed down with a pint. What for breakfast? Come on, Alan. For breakfast, bagging us a mash, dear. Oh, no, 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 no. We couldn't have that. We couldn't have that at all. So uh, some of yours here. Let's have a look there. Um, where are we now? Rod Brown, here we are. English breakfast consists of fried egg, bacon, pork sausages, baked beans, black puddings, hash browns can also be included. Toast is optional. Oh, yes, toast as well. Toast as well. Yeah, you would have that on your on your English breakfast in the morning, wouldn't you? Just to the side there, as well as the fried. Not instead of. Oh, no. As well as the fried bread. You wouldn't be able to move if I did you an English breakfast. Perhaps I should start having that on my tours when I do tours of my garden. I'll offer in a full English breakfast as well for the princely sum of 20 pounds per person. Got to make a bit of profit here. Ben Parker. Good morning, Ben. Who says might be work a trip out to Limehouse, which is where um, Sir Ian McKellen has a pub. I'm sure it's called The Grapes and I'm sure he does the quiz on a Monday night. Unfortunately, I work Monday night, so I wouldn't be able to come to that. But uh, I think you should go and have a look, Ben. Go and have a look. You'd enjoy that. And you'd go and talk to him as well. I know you would. Get the lowdown on how he does the quiz, all right? Um, thank you very much, Kevin, who sends uh, sends through a full English breakfast recipe from Sainsbury's. Like you need a recipe for that. Come on. You don't, do you really? Toast and tea, yeah. Hi to Ray Reynolds, who says Sunday night at the London Palladium was live from London ATV from 1955. And the first compare was Tommy Trinder. Tommy Trinder. I, now, I don't remember Tommy Trinder at all. Uh, you've got to be uh, probably in your 60s to, to, uh, to remember him. Bruce took her over in 1958. Pub started to install a black and white telly in the corner as so many viewers were staying in to watch Bruce on the telly and not coming out to the pub. So they started installing tellies. Wasn't anything to do with the sport. Ray was telling me this the other day. Nothing to do with the sport at all. The televisions were installed years ago for Bruce Forsyth's Sunday night at the London Palladium. And that's the thing. So thank you very much, boys and girls. Uh, I'm going to leave you here this morning. OK, just a nice... Quick, short, sharp, sweet, short, sharp, sweet show for you. Perhaps it wasn't so sweet for you. I don't know. Um, just to do today's birthdays then. We've got a few birthdays today. Happy birthday to my childhood friend, Peter Watts. 
uh, whose birthday it is this morning. He's got to be around about the same age as me. So I guess you're 53, 54 or 55. I think 54 today. You must be about 54 today. Happy birthday, Peter. I spent many, many a evening with my friend Peter on our bikes. We would go out to the bike. We'd go over Wimbledon Common. Uh, we'd cycle to a place called Powell Park, which is uh, just at the bottom of Roehampton. Uh, in the woods, we'd make our cat little camps. We would, honestly, we'd make little camp sites and put string across the floor so anyone who tried to intrude would trip up. <laughs> and the most, we were very dangerous one day on a, I never forget it, on a Sunday morning, we cycled, I kid you not, down the A3 from Roehampton to the playing fields, which were on the right, just coming onto the main part of the A3. I mean, my God. The speed limit along that road was 70 mile an hour. And here we were, two young boys, I think about 13 or 14, cycling on that same road where we got down to the... Um, I never forget, I had this new bike. He got a racer and I had a like a... It was a ladies' bike, really. It looked like a ladies' bike. It was a pooch picnic, red bike, with a white bag on the back. And I, I was so proud of this white bag that I just bought. And I put orange juice in it, got down to the other end, opened the bag and the, the top had come off and it ruined my brand new bag. I was so upset. And I lost half me orange, half me orange drink as well. And we went into these playing fields and we found this hut. So we set up camp in his hut and ate our sandwiches. And I don't know what else we did. We just had a walk around as, uh, as children used to do then. Not sat in front of some blooming computer. So happy birthday, Peter. Uh, and I hope you have a wonderful day. I know you've had a, a, a really rough time recently. So I hope you have a wonderful birthday. Happy birthday to my very, very, very good friend, Peter Watts. All right. Uh, happy birthday this morning to David Thompson, who comes and sings at the karaoke at Central Station sometimes. 39 today. Happy birthday, uh, David. Sean Lee Evans. Hello, Sean. 34. Happy birthday, Sean. You're you're in your best age period now, if it's the same as mine. My best age period was between 32 and 47. That's when I was um, mad. Out every night. Oh, it was a wonderful time. Happy birthday, Sean, OK? I remember our little shopping trip to Tesco's as well. Happy birthday to, do, to Danny Stephen Andrew. Uh, Adrian Richardson. Happy birthday, Adrian. Chrissy Lahan is 30 years old today. Happy birthday, Chrissy. Love the little pink hat you've got on. Uh, our good friend Sky, Sky Hutchinson, who I only ever met once, strangely enough. Uh, and he was he was in Heaven Nightclub. I think he was too young to be in there, but he was in there. Uh, and I think it was his first time in a gay club. And uh, I was DJing at the time and I met Sky and he got very drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Matt looked after you that night, didn't he, when you got very drunk. So happy birthday. He's 28 now. Happy birthday, Sky. I hope everything's going really well for you, OK? And happy birthday today to Dean Mills. So uh, let's sing the song. Here we go, boys and girls. It's happy birthday time. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, lovely people. Happy birthday to you. Have a wonderful day on this Saturday on your birthdays. Your late messages coming in here. Um, Kevin says it's the grapes in Limehouse. Thank you, Kevin. I'm booking a train ticket. Are you going to go and see him? I, I would go down and see him. He does. I'm sure he does the quiz night on Monday. Check out before you go. That it that I've been given the correct information because I'm not hundred percent, but it wouldn't surprise me. He's a very nice man. He really is. Um, all right there. Uh, Kevin's off to build a website. Good luck with that, mate. God, I wouldn't have a clue. I wouldn't have a clue. Ben says I clearly remember Tommy Trinder comparing the Palladium shows at the start. Thank you, Colin. And uh, Ben says, can you just imagine you being camp on the common, dear? I was never ever camp on the common. Never ever camp on the common. Ghastly place to be. That's it today. Thank you very much. Uh, tomorrow night, if you're not doing anything tomorrow night, come along. We have a what? Oh, I meant to tell you, I had a lovely message. Um, I was looking around for him on my Facebook wall and he's not there. Uh, someone was in the pub last night and it's their 50th birthday today. Uh, Stephen is his name. Now, where's, where's my note? 
I haven't got my name. I don't. Oh, it doesn't matter anyway. So his name's Stephen. He was 50 yesterday. I don't think he watches these. But he said something to me last night. He came up to me. He says, I'm 50 tomorrow. I can't believe that. He said, how old are you? I said, 54. He said, oh, well, I always thought I was older than you. I said, well, you're not, are you? I'm 54. He said, oh, wow. Well. He said, you're very special to me. He said, because all the time I've been coming out on the gay scene, going to different pubs and all that, you've always been there. Always been there while he's been going out, either working somewhere, the main one being, of course, the black cat. Um, uh, but he's all, I've always been there wherever he's been. He's walked into a pub and I've been doing some sort of entertainment thing in there. Isn't that a lovely thing to say? And he gave me a big hug and he said, thank you. I think that's a wonderful and that's a lovely note to finish on today. It really is. Uh, once again, boys and girls, don't forget, tomorrow night it's karaoke at the Camden Eye. It's an early one, that one, 8 p.m. till run about 10.45. If you want to join us in there, it's a lovely night. Uh, nice and loud, fantastic speakers and sound system in there. It really is. So come along every Sunday night to the Camden Eye in Camden Town between 8 and 10.45. And next, I think it's next. Hang on, let me work. What's it? I, yeah, uh, is it? 26. I don't know if that's the bank holiday. Just a minute. I don't know. Um, on the Sunday bank holiday, which is either next week or the week after, we'll be going to 2 o'clock on that particular night at the Camden Eye, OK? So usually it's 8 till 10.45. On the bank holiday Sunday, it will be 8 until 2 a. Uh, God knows I'm going to stay awake that long. They'll, they'll have to feed. I may have to break my Slimmer's World thing and have a pizza on the night or I'll just fall asleep. Have a nice Saturday and I'll see you again very, very soon. All right. Thanks very much for watching and listening. Cheerio now.